This is the Permablend Microblading Pro pigment set and it is from their Lux line which means that it is EU reach compliant and if you've been microblading using Permablend I, one of the things that you might realize with it that maybe you don't like is that the formula for Permablend Classic is more runny, it's more watery, it's looser, um, it's not as thick or glycerin rich as some of the other pigments that you might have used for microblading and so um, Permablend has been listening and they formulated this specifically for microblading. It is also pre-modified, which is important for microblading. And so this is completely different than their classic line. And I'm so excited to open this and check it out with you. So let's just go ahead and take a look at that. These look so pretty. They look so cool. Um, and as always, I love the box. I love the design. And, you know, I always say this when I'm, you know, like checking this stuff out. I always say like, oh my gosh, the, the box feels so good. It's beautiful. It's so well done. The bottles, you know, look so good. And some people might be saying like, who cares? Like, I care about performance. I care about price point. I care about quality. And those things are at the, the top, right? Like quality is going to be at the top, followed by like ease and uh, healed results, price point, you know, all of those things like that. Like who cares how much effort that they put into the box. But to me, the devil is in the details. And when you see that there is something that where every little detail is, you know, right on point and you can see that love and time and effort were put into it, that tells me that if they put this much effort into the packaging, then what they put in the bottle is even better. And so you might not think that, you know, packaging and things like that are important, but like I said, it's all in the details and if they put this much thought and everything into, you know, something as silly as a box, then I know that what's in the bottle is just, it's more than a bunch of colors. It's science, research, quality, and everything that we've grown to expect from Permablend. So let's open these up and have a look at them and we'll do some drawdowns and things like that. So what you might notice first and foremost is that these bottles look very different from what you are used to uh, from Permablend. And that is because, like I said, the formula is different. So this is not the watery formula that we're used to in the other uh, lines, right? So Permablend Classic, Tina Davies, Brow Daddy, um, even Flow, all of the uh, um, Carlos Sculpted line, those are all they vary in their formula, don't get me wrong, but they are a waterier line and that means that they've got a concentrated amount of pigment, high pigment load without a lot of thickness in the carrier, right? Um, and the carrier is the liquid part that holds the pigments. So in a microblading pigment, um, we typically like to, if you're a microblading artist, you typically like to have them be a little thicker and you don't want them drying as quickly because we like to do that pigment mask afterwards, right? So we don't want the pigment drying on the needle, right? Because we're going to pick it up and we don't want it falling off the needle, of course, um, before we even get it in the skin. So we want like a good adherence to the needle and we also want for it to um, not dry up on the needle or as we're putting it in the skin or when we're doing our pigment mask we want to keep it wet and so glycerin is definitely one of those components that helps that happen and and so with the thicker formula too they've got this cool little pump bottle so um, this is an airless pump bottle so instead of you know turning it over and trying to squeeze it out you're just gonna give it little pumps and pump it right into your pigment cap or your pigment ring whatever you like to use also in the box you have this insert and this is a guide to the colors. What I love about this is that it is showing you what is in your pigments. Now years ago and I don't even want to say years ago like a handful of years ago most people did not know what was in their pigments they were just like oh, okay this is a brown it's a warm brown it's a neutral brown it's a golden brown it's an ashy cool brown whatever but now people started asking questions people started saying yeah but what's in the color why does it heal like this why you know am I using this one with that one or what about opacity and what about translucency and all of those things right like that started 
started becoming very important to people because the techniques were getting more complex, which of course means that the uh, the knowledge of the techniques and the pigments needs to be more complex. Pigment companies started educating people more, right? They started saying like, hey, this is what's in the pigment. This is how we formulated it. And so we start getting things charts like this. And I absolutely love this chart because it tells you literally everything that you need to know. So for example, this is glow up and obviously it's a gold which means it's a modifying color right it tells you what colors are being used in there so we can see that there's a bright yellow a more muted yellow a white so it's going to have some opacity right and this kind of rusty red color so i don't know if you can see there you go right and then over here it gives you an opacity scale and it tells you that it's got low opacity right which means it's going to have some translucency to it but you know we know it's got the white so it's got a little bit um it tells you about the color here and then it tells you the temperature down here right? And it tells you that it's a warm temperature um if we go over here this taupe taupe notch right there it's going to give us the colors here and we can see that there's some black in it right um there's black there's orange there's yellow two different yellows there's white it is a medium opacity and the temperature is cool leaning right so you see that so it's not totally cool but it or that's warm it's not totally cool but it's also a little bit past the center so that's a lot of information right there which is incredible to have because again years ago you know we didn't we didn't really know about pigments like this like we we knew kind of a little bit about the colors and the undertone and the overtone and all of that but now we're really seeing artists kind of dig really really deep into these colors and knowing what's in them and that way you know how to adjust them and things like that so um as a side note i recently took carla ricadone's um the sculpted color theory for lips and even though she designed it for her sculpted lips, uh, the, the Embody and Embrace sets, it was definitely done in a uh, pigments non-specific way, so you can use it with anything. But when I tell you the amount of detail that she went into in this course, um, so that you can not just understand the lip colors and the lip undertones and overtones and all of that, but the pigments themselves and how they interact with those colors, it was like an eight hour class and then it, it was a 30 day intensive. And when I tell you, you need every second of it because it is so detailed and so science based. And so, and I know she's doing one for brows as well that's coming up soon. So if you are interested in, in really understanding all of these things here, or if you feel like you struggle with color theory, I definitely recommend, um, you know, taking her course, taking her classes because they are absolutely incredible. But like I said, people are getting deep into it. Some people have had fundamental training where they literally had like an hour on color theory, right? And I just told you I did a 30 day intensive with an eight hour like physical course, right? So, you know, the, the color theory that we're learning today is so much more advanced. And thankfully, companies like Permablend give us the information that we so desperately crave so that we can understand what's in our pigments. And I absolutely love that. So on the back of this, um, it gives you all of the colors and it tells you all of the different colors that are used in this set and also like, you know, what they are. So for example, it says yellow 180, it gives you the CI number. It says it's a very bright yellow and it's warm. Right? So that's important because sometimes when we read the bottles, we might pick up a bottle and say, oh, look, this has a yellow 180 in it. That's not telling me anything, right? Because we, we can see here that yellow 180 is very different than these yellows over here. So just knowing what's in the color or, or what's in the pigment bottle is important, but only knowing that information isn't enough. We need to know what the colors also look like. And we also need to know, are they high in opacity? Are they organic? Are they inorganic? And so 
I know that this was supposed to be a video about the microblading set, but because they included this incredible chart, I really kind of wanted to talk about how important having that chart is. So when you crack this open and you look at it, don't just be like, oh, look, it's a color chart and I can, you know, just look and read it and I can see what color that is. Like, no, get to know your colors, get to know the, the colors by themselves, get to know your pigments, um, and it's going to give you better results, more reliable results, and more consistent results across all skin types. So let's now go ahead and jump right into doing some drawdowns. Right, so let's open this up. And so it does come with this chart that we talked about. Um, and it gives you all of the colors and then all of the information about the colors. So again, just to kind of go over this, a color like this, have your cake. It says that it is a mid-range brown, which is uniquely more neutral in temperature. We can see that it has two yellows here. This is a more muted tone yellow. This is a brighter yellow. It does have some white in it. Um, and then it has two reds. This is a more orangey red. This is a darker red. And then, of course, a little bit of black. It is a organic and inorganic blend. The opacity is medium and the temperature is neutral. So that's how the, you read a chart like this. Um, even though this chart is here, it's still so important that you do color swatches or drawdowns on your pigments because you really want to have a full understanding of what you're looking at because we all see color differently. What I consider a neutral color, maybe you might consider a little warmer or a little cooler. Um, and so definitely taking the advice of the manufacturer is important, but you should always know your colors really, really well. And so whenever I get a new set of colors, I always, 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 well, first of all, I always read the packaging. I always read what's inside of the box because it's going to tell me the most about the colors. And then I do a drawdown so that I have a good understanding of the color. So this is what these look like. And you can see this is an entirely new design from what we're used to seeing in the permablend line. So for example, this is Chocolate Kiss, and this is from the Permablend Classic line, and you can see it's a completely different looking bottle. And so these are airless pump bottles, so you're gonna pump out like this, and then put your cap back on like that. If you look at the bottles themselves, you've got the name of the color, you've got all of the information, the lot number, all of that stuff, and then this QR code, which will take you to the SDS sheet and give you all the information that you need about the pigment as well. Really don't discount this kind of information. You want to look it up for every color that you use and really get an intimate understanding of what's in your bottles. Let's take these all out. So this is a standard drawdown sheet. Drawdown sheets do not have to be complicated. Um, you can just use a regular sheet of white paper. It's good to have this black line across the center because that black line is going to give you an idea of the opacity of the pigment that you're using. Um, and we'll see when we draw them down um, if it covers the black very well, it means it's high in opacity. If it does not cover the black very well, then it is low in opacity. So let's just write these, the names of these on here. All right, so whenever we're doing any kind of drawdown, the only two or three ingredients or three things that you need are cotton swabs, a little bit of water, and the pigment that you're going to use. So normally I would say shake your pigments very well, but these you can hear there's nothing in here to shake them because they're in air pump bottles. And so we'll just pop this open. And this is the first time that I'm opening all of these, so it is going to take a pump or two to get it out. There we go. So the first thing that you should notice with this is that unlike 
the regular permablend line, it is a little thicker and that's because they're intended for microblading. So with microblading, we wanna have a little bit um, thicker of a formula. Because not only do we want it to stick well to the needle, we want it to get into the um, get into those strokes and to stay there and not to dry very fast. So typically, microblading formulas are going to have a little more glycerin than regular formulas. So this is Glow Up. We can see here it is not a strong opacity, and let's check that against here. So we can see here it is low in opacity, and that's showing on here, right? It's got a really lovely golden tone right here, but as it becomes diluted, it becomes very yellow. So this is great for warming up colors. It's great for creating golden tones. This is Taupe Notch. And so when I, all I'm doing is dipping in the water and then I just kind of get rid of a little bit because I don't want there to be I want it to be wet, but I don't want it to be too soaked. And then I just bring the color as far down as it will let me go. So according to the packaging, this is a lighter in color and slightly cool, which makes it suitable for a wide range of skin tones. It is an organic blend. It is medium in opacity, which we can see. I don't know if you could see it very well on this camera, but you can see that it is covering the black a little bit better than this one did here. And it's slightly cool on the temperature scale. And you can see that for me, I don't know how it's translating on the video, but for me, it's a pretty rich looking what I would consider dark, dark blonde or very, very light blonde or very, very light brown. Um, and as it comes down here, I see more yellow in it, like more golden tone, um, which would be the, that neutral area. And because it is slightly cool, meaning it's neutral, leaning slightly this way instead of leaning slightly warm, we would see more orangey tone in it if it was leaning slightly warm. So this one is clay all day. And again, I can't you know, stress enough that this formula is much different. So if you're wondering, do I need a separate set for um, machine work and a separate set for microblading, you can microblade with the permablend line, the regular permablend line, but these were specifically designed for microblading. And so the formula is not only different, it's optimized for using with microblading techniques and it's it's not that it's so thick, but it's thick enough that it is not optimized for using in the machine. If you try using this with your regular permanent makeup machine, you may find that there's not a very good ink flow out of the cartridge, and that's because this was not optimized for that. It is made to be used with microblading tools. So I mean, just as promised, this is a very clay looking color for sure. And let's go back and check here. So this is earthy, warm reminiscence of terracotta. It is medium in opacity, which we could see here. It is showing on the black. It's a very, all the way over here, very warm color, which I think we can agree that this is very, very warm. And we can see over here, again, it is a blend. And so why is that important that we have a blend? Well, a video like this is way too short to go into all the nuances of organic and inorganic, but organic colors are going to be colors that are carbon-based and inorganics are going to be non or um, carbon-based. So uh, iron oxides, things like that. Iron oxides tend to be more muted colors where organics tend to be brighter colors with the exception of carbon black, which obviously is black, so it's not bright. Um, organics also tend to fade warm over time, whereas organics 
tend to fade cool over time. So when you have a blend, you're basically balancing those colors out so that you have the best of both worlds and they complement each other. And so I personally prefer an organic blend 100%. This one is Have Your Cake. And you can see, you can see here the, the viscosity of this pigment is way different, like I keep saying, than the um, the classic permablend lines. Look at how thick that is. Turn that sideways. You see how it's just sitting there like a little dollop? So again, much thicker formula, which again is optimized for using with microblading. So particularly if you were someone who wanted to try permablend in the past, but you either didn't um, like the formula or you were afraid to try it because you're used to working with microblading pigments that are much thicker, this now is the set that is the answer to all of your wishes. So this color is so pretty. Um, this is, I would say that this is a very um, all around brunette. So. It says here it is a mid-range brown, um, uniquely more neutral in temperature. It is a medium opacity, and we can see that it is showing a bit on here. Um, it, again, it's an or organic and inorganic blend, and it is a neutral color. Now, if you notice, most of these colors are fairly warm or neutral, which is important in microblading because microblading, as you may or may not already know, can sometimes heal quite cool, particularly if you're not getting your depth right. And so most microblading lines are pre-modified. And as we can see here, especially in these colors here, um, they are quite warm and ready to use. I mean, this is clearly a modifier, but um, they're pretty much ready to go, ready to use without requiring any modification. And not everyone likes a warm brow, so there are definitely some cooler leaning colors. And of course, the darker the color gets, the cooler typically it's going to be as well. So this one is Spill the Tea. So I thought I really loved this one as an all-around brunette. This one is really, really nice too. So this one says that it is a juicy scoop of cool red, ideal for clients with a thirst for subtle tea. So the opacity here is low, um, which in, on this page it does show up, like it does look like it's coming through pretty well, but it also looks like I did not dilute very well. So let's see. And it shows here that it is quite cool. It shows on here that it's a very, very cool color. But if you look at the color and you're saying to yourself, well, that doesn't seem very cool to me, especially next to a color like this. This looks quite red, right? Let's go back to, and this is again why it's so important to learn your colors and understand the formula. It says here that it has a scoop of cool red. So it does have red in it. And if we come back over here, we see that there's kind of a burnt orange color here. We have red 254, which is a very bright red. And then we have um, yellow 180, which is a really golden yellow. And there is some, a little bit of titanium dioxide in here, the white. So another important thing to remember is that the order of the ingredients is also how much of that ingredient is in the formula. So in this formula here, yellow 180 is going to be the most, whereas red 101 is going to be the least. Here, red 254 is going to be the most, where this orangey red down here, 36, is going to be the least. So what does that mean? The reason we see so much red 
in this color is because red is the first ingredient there. So it means that the most of it is there. And it says it's got a juicy scoop, but I'm going to go ahead and interpret that as meaning that it has a, a healthy scoop of red because red is, is the first ingredient here. And then we do have that orangey color here too. So there is quite a bit of warmth in here even though it is say, telling you that it is a cool temperature. So this is so important. If you're only reading this, if you're only reading this part and looking at that and only reading this part, you're not getting all of the information. If you're only looking at the colors that are in the ingredients here and not reading the rest, again, you're not getting a full idea. And then again, it's important to visually see what it looks like because if I choose this brown, for a client that I wanted this tone of brown for, then I'm really far apart and you know, obviously vice versa. Um, also, we know that because there's so much red in this one, we might want to not modify with a color like this because that would put even more red into it. Maybe we wanna modify with the glow up because we wanna add more golden tones to it. So again, a very strong, background in or a very strong understanding of color theory is important but also just visually seeing your colors so that you can make better choices for your clients and last but not least we have all night long This is a very cool black brown, perfect for melanin rich skin. It has low opacity and the color, the temperature here is showing as very cool. But again, understand your pigments. It's telling you, the manufacturer is telling you that it's very cool, but look what we've got. We have yellow 138, which is bright yellow, 42, which is like a an ochre, kind of dull yellow. We have red 238, which is a very cool red. And then we have yellow, or um, sorry, orange 73, which is a bright orange. So it's not that this color is devoid of warm colors. It's just that it is got, and, and if you go by what I said before, yellow is the, the two, these two yellows are the first colors, right? But then we do have quite a bit of carbon black before we get to these other modifying colors. So in this formula here, black is the last color. In this formula here, it's the third color. In this formula here, it's the third color. So we can see that in the colors that have black as their last ingredient, they are lighter colors than the ones that have black as the third ingredient. So again, super important to understand your pigments, understand the formulas, understand what's in them, Otherwise, if you don't understand the colors, you're not going to understand the chart. If you don't understand the chart, you're not going to understand the visual. And if you don't understand the visual, then a lot of this isn't going to make sense. Or you're going to put these colors just by looking at them visually. You're going to look at them and say, oh, that's the perfect color for my client. You're going to put it in their skin and you're going to get something back that you do not desire. And so now that they've dried a little bit, we can see that this color um, like they said all night long, that it is a cool brown. So even though it does have all of the, the modifying colors in there, it is still a very cool brown. So while the nuances of color theory are very um, long and difficult sometimes to understand, it's not something that I could put into a drawdown video because we'll be here literally for days. Um, but again, if you don't have a strong knowledge of color theory, you really need to invest in getting as much information in that as possible so that all of this makes sense. Because like I mentioned before, manufacturers are now realizing that as consumers, we are really interested in what's in our colors. And so they're giving us all of that great information. Um, and not, like I said, not just, not only in the in the chart, but then also, you know, like back here, it's telling you exactly what those colors are. Um, if you're not, you know, familiar with the colors, you know, cause how many of us truly have these all memorized? So, um, you know, the, the manufacturers are realizing that we love 
this science, we love this information, and they're offering it to us, but it's no good to us if we don't understand how to use it. So I hope you enjoyed this drawdown. If you would like to purchase the microblading set, the Permablend Lux Microblading Pro Set is available at teachmepmu.com in the shop. Use code ANGELA10 for 10% off. 